Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a Happy Mail card to share with you featuring a, a lovely digital stamp that was released during October. Uh, it was part of the new release by uh, Mi Fabrica de Creaciones. I have no clue, truly I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly. But concerning the name of this adorable I call it Mushroom Bunny, um, I will refer you towards the description box down below on my blog post because I truly have no idea how to pronounce um, this name. I really do not. I have no clue. Um, so I just want to invite you to enjoy the coloring of uh, this adorable bunny. Um, and afterwards we will create a background for this card. So I started by printing this digital stamp onto Transit High Perfect Coloring Paper, which is the paper that I use all the time for Copic coloring. Um, and I took my Copic markers and started coloring. I really wanted to go for this brown, warm brown, and then really dark, rich red color uh, on the coloring of uh, the uh, dress and hat of this bunny. Um, so, um, in case you're wondering about the colors that I'm using here, you want to have a reference for later on, you can find all of the combinations for each part on my blog post. Um, this red combination is truly one of my favorites. It's so rich, it's so dark, there is contrast, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> so I'm really glad that I took it out again, uh, it's one of my oldest combinations of reds uh, ever, uh, but it still works. And still one of my favorites so that's a, that's a big deal. So I try to avoid uh, these spots on the mushroom head um, because reds are kind of hard to, um, to get rid of. There is a colorless blender of course if you make any mistakes and you don't like them or you cannot oversee them you can always use a colorless blender. But even though you have that sometimes with red markers it can be really really hard to push that color back. Um, so just for that I try to keep that in mind whenever I'm using a dark red combination as this one is, uh, but there are solutions. I'm also later on going to add uh, some uh, nouveau crystal drops, simply white uh, ones on the top of these white spots of the mushroom. It's something I really love doing, I also love adding it to Christmas hats. Uh, Whenever I think of it, of course, uh, you don't need to, but in case you actually made any mistakes like I did, I, I made tiny boos here and there, uh, I used my colorless blender to try to push everything back and it worked kind of, worked kind of nicely. Uh, but in the end, since I was going over it with the Nouveau Crystal Drops, I might not have needed to do that, but you never know. I actually never know how my card is going to end up like until it's finished because I am unorganized whenever I'm creating, it just uh, comes to me on the go. Um, so therefore, I had no clue yet. Um, <laughs> so here for the bunny, she is going to be in a really soft, a light brown. Also one that I use all the time, it's E33, E53 and E51. And it just works, oh, and E50 as well. It depends on how big my images are. Sometimes I use two, three, or four markers in one combination, it really depends. Um, and it's all up to you as well, uh, whether you want to use more or less markers. Whatever you like is the way to go. Also for the shadowing, I think it's clear that I wanted to add like a light source in the center of my bunny. Um, a highlight there, uh, really simple, so I added my darkest color on the right and the left side. Now before uh, adding a background, I um, wanted to figure out how it was going to take uh, place or be added. I really love this uh, watercolor wash freeform stencil. I think I've said it many times already that it's one of my favorites. Um, and whenever you don't have a clue what to do, really take this one, it's perfect. Uh, and if you don't like the, the fact that it's a free form, there's also a rectangle, a square, uh, so there are many ways to go. I also printed this image onto just some cheap printer paper, just added some temporary adhesive 
and I made a mouth like that and now I am going to do some ink blending. I already die cut the panel out as you can see using the basic rectangles and then I use some purple tape to keep the stencil in place. Now because I really had these warm and deep colors already I wanted to have this background like a really rustic brown combination of colors so I took a combination of rusty hinge, wild honey and gathered twigs uh, distress inks to have like a, a spotted like brownish color combination in the back um, it wasn't like well the idea wasn't really to have like the darkest on the edges and then go to the lightest no it was really the idea to have a smudgy autumn, autumn kind of feeling in the background so once I had that done I could remove all of the masks and see how it turned out I really loved it, must admit it, I was really happy with the combination of these three distress inks um, but I still needed the sentiment. And while I was searching for a sentiment I came across uh, these two sets from Hello Bluebird, the three uh, neighbors and fall banner buddies. And the thing was that I actually just wanted to have a sentiment and have it really clean and simple. But then I got inspired by the fact that when you buy this digital stamp you also get tons of tiny elements that you can add all around uh, your image, on your background, anywhere you want to. And there are leaves, there are mushrooms and all of a sudden I thought of that and I was like okay I have tons of leaves, several different kinds in these stamp sets. I can easily white heat emboss uh, several of them and just have them as kind of a background uh, and then the sentiment is there right in the center. So that's what I went for. I took several uh, leaves that I could find and the sentiment and I just scattered them in that ink blended area because I was going to white heat emboss. Outside of that area you will not be able to see it so why bother? So I laid everything out and once I was kind of happy with placement, I took my Misty and my Versamark ink, I prepped this panel, stamped everything out and then I took my white powder from Ranger, super fine detail, the embossing powder and just created my background and my sentiment. So um, in case you're like me, I'm kind of impatience impatient so <laughs> I really need to prep my my areas where I want to heat emboss on um, there are many tools to do that I have this powder tool but you can also use a powder bag uh, to get great results and then I stamp my sentiment and my images here multiple times to get that crisp image that I need because once you add your powder it's it's good or not you know it's <laughs> if you didn't stamp anything or you you have some areas that didn't go through good enough it's just a bit of a bummer so I made sure to stamp it multiple times and then uh, any excess of embossing powder I'm removing with a paintbrush I did it really slowly I sped this up uh, <laughs> to not have you sitting here watching for hours on how I remove excess embossing powder um, but yeah so I made sure to melt every single embossing powder on this and then I uh, buffed off all of the excess powder from the powder tool um, and then I got this uh, kind of well I, I, I think it's really cool <laughs> this background it's a bit wonky it's yeah I don't know what you think uh, but I added it on a card panel and then I was wondering whether I could create something or well just add something more so I took as I said before these new wood crystal drops I added them on all of the elements of this mushroom head of course some of the areas were a bit harder to get uh, right so I used my craft knife to help me uh, make sure that it was right in those spots I really love how those shapes are different every time they aren't just circles but it just made it a bit harder to get it perfectly uh, as it should be. So just take your time, use a craft knife or anything else that is kind of sharp to get rid of excess. 
and then after these uh, well crystal drops I actually decided to add some glossy accents and you might wonder where to add it on this kind of card uh, but I really love the eyes of these bunnies they are really big so they sparkle when you add some glossy accents I did that and then I decided to also add it on the sentiment and just until today and I already shared it last month I'm wondering whether this was a good decision or not um, I could have stopped after the eyes but now the sentiment is really shiny as well uh, so I don't know if it is something that you would have done or not you can always let me know in the comments um, it's something that I'm wondering uh, but this is my card uh, this is the one that I created for uh, the new release by Mi Fabrica de Creaciones. <laughs> Wondering whether it's right, what I say. But um, yeah, I had a ton of fun creating this autumn themed card. Um, a bit of happy mail. I hope that you enjoyed this video uh, and got inspired of course. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time to watch this video. I truly appreciate you all being here and supporting me. Thank you so much. I wish you all an incredible day and I'll be back soon with some new craft inspiration. Bye!